So you're thinking about selling your apartment building, and I know there's lots of options, lots of agents, lots of brokers. What do you do? Today we're gonna to talk about the questions, the attributes, what to look for in the right agent so that you choose the right company, the right firm to represent you and your apartment building. You're getting a lot of calls from companies, from agents telling you that your property is worth so much and every single month, maybe they tell you it's worth more. You're getting postcards, you're getting inundated on social media from various companies and you don't know what to do or what direction to go. And you're thinking about selling your property because, well, it's worth more now than it's ever been worth before. You know there's a lot of interest. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. There's rent control, there's eviction moratorium. Maybe, just maybe, it's time to retire. Maybe it's time to go out of state. Or maybe you're done with the depreciation of your asset and your CPA has indicated this might be a good time to sell. So who am I and why should you listen to what I'm saying? I'm Juan Wiesar, president of Sage Real Estate. Yes, I am a real estate broker, but I am an apartment owner first. I was able to purchase my first apartment building when I was 23, fresh out of college. So I know what it's like to deal with our tenants. I know what it's like to get the calls. I know what it's like to get vacancies. I know rent collections. I'm part of the apartment association. So I'm heavily involved in the daily transactions of apartment ownership. So I can certainly relate to you. So now the next step is choosing the right agent. Why do you even need an agent? I know some of our clients have thought about selling their property themselves, which we highly discourage because if you go with the right agent, this is someone who has the experience. This is someone who's negotiating every day, dealing with brokers, dealing with buyers and appraisers. And if you haven't done this in 10, 20 years, why would you choose to sell your biggest asset uh, on your own versus having a professional assist to maximize that value? So why do you need a good agent? Well, first off, when you go with a professional, someone who's experienced in what they're doing, they're truly passionate about what they do. They're gonna properly evaluate the property so when it hits the market, it's at the right price. They're gonna market the property. They know how to sell the property in terms of the highlights, the income, its location, its tenant base, they understand the property and they're gonna get you through the process. Going with the right agent means someone who knows how to deal with tenants, someone who could get you out of some sticky situations that we know in a transaction are often to occur. If the right agent will make this be a smooth process and you will be glad you went with them. Oftentimes when a property hits the market and we're looking through the MLS and there's a lot of things we see, they don't do a good job with describing the property. How many bedrooms? What's the income? What's the gross rent multiplier, which is one of the measures we use? What's the cap rate? What's the expenses? Instead of having 30 or 40 photos like we normally do, they have one photo. The things that they're doing simply are not helping sell your property. And so choosing the right agent is super important. This is considered one of the most stressful situations that most folks get themselves into. And for that reason, you want someone that has the experience and who's knowledgeable. You want the transaction to go smooth, you want it to sell quicker and you want to sell for more. Here are the mistakes that I often see with apartment owners when they choose to list with someone else. A common one is going with an out of area agent. And a lot of times that's done because the out of area agent is maybe your friend, maybe a family member. And, and they say, sure, I could sell your apartment building. I've done a few homes. That's not a problem. But they live in Sherman Oaks or Encino or somewhere else and they don't understand the dynamics of Long Beach. The second mistake that I see oftentimes is you let your single family home realtor, who you trust, who I'm sure is good at selling homes, knows nothing about small income producing properties. Let me give you an example. When we list an apartment building, agents and buyers are gonna contact us with questions. How did you come up with the valuation? What I found, because I've asked this to residential agents, they don't understand what a gross rent multiplier is. They don't know how to calculate the cap rate. In fact, they don't even know what a cap rate is. It's a yield, which is a return on the property. They don't know net operating income. So oftentimes we find listings that are missing gaps or the agent is unable to sell it from a financial perspective, because guess what? They don't sell income properties. They simply sell houses, which again, they're good at that, but this is not their specialty. So I think it's really, really important that you go with someone who lives in the area, someone who specializes in these types of properties. And number three, this is a common mistake. A lot of brokers take this tactic that the only way they're gonna earn your business is by maybe misleading you that your property is worth way more than what the market's gonna bear. Let me give you an example. That should maybe sell for 1.1. So a common fourplex 
on average sells for 1.1 million. And we will see properties listed 200, 300,000 above. And I'm wondering why would they do that? How did they come up with this price? And what ends up happening is the price ultimately doesn't sell and it turns into a, an expired listing. So the fourth mistake that I often see is listing with someone who earns your business by simply reducing their fees. This is something that we refer to as a discount broker. A discount broker simply tries to do volume by reducing their fees, but they're not exactly equipped to sell properties. At this point, their only value to you is that they've been able to reduce their price. It doesn't mean that they're the best broker in the area. It doesn't mean that they have the best marketing. It doesn't even mean they have the best database. All they're offering you is a low fee. And at the end of the day, I see in that type of representation, the seller never comes out on top. So let's move on to what to look for when choosing the right real estate professional. First and foremost, is the person you're interviewing or thinking about hiring, are they a specialist when it comes to multifamily properties? Meaning there's a lot of licensed agents out there. You know, we joke around that pretty much when you're born, they're giving you a birth certificate and a real estate license. So there's a long range of real estate that could be done. There's folks who simply focus in on single family homes. There's folks who do multifamily like ourselves. There's commercial and even within the commercial realm, there's industrial, there's office, there's retail, so on and so forth. And so choosing the right agent for your type of property, critically important. And the next thing to look for is, are they qualified and experts in what they do? Similar to any athlete, whether it's baseball, football, everyone has stats, right? And so you wanna go with someone who has the better stats. So later on, we're gonna give you the actual questions you should be asking so that you can determine whether they're qualified. So the next thing you need to look for after you've determined they're qualified is, are they an expert in the area? Do they know the area? Do they live in the area? Knowing the ins and outs, being boots on the ground, knowing the different markets, the different neighborhoods, the rents, what's going on with properties on the same street in that neighborhood, critically important. Now, unfortunately, a lot of agents, a lot of the folks that we work with are simply in it for the commission. So once the transaction's done, they move on. Now, something, an approach that we've done that's quite differently is we built this community where before the sale, we were here educating you on how much to raise your rent and all kinds of other things that are going on impacting you as an owner. During the transaction, certainly we do the best job possible so that it's a smooth transaction as it can be. But then after, once it's closed, we're still there continuing to be a resource because a lot of apartment owners, they might sell one of their buildings but they certainly own more. We're always there as a resource. So now that you know the four things to look for in choosing the right agent, we're now gonna give you the questions to ask and so that you can analyze to make sure that it's the right person for the job. Part two of that is, this is where we find their stats. When I mentioned earlier about being an athlete and having stats, what's that mean? You should be asking that person, in the last 12 months, how many apartment buildings have you sold in this specific area? What's the ratio between the actual list price, the actual sold price, are we above or are we below? And on average, how long does it take you to sell a property? Now, when you're asking these questions, a true professional should have stats and should be able to show you this. If they're not prepared, maybe they're not the right person for the job. Another question you should be asking the person you're interviewing is, do you market yourself as a multifamily expert? Is that your specialty or are you a realtor, a single family home realtor? Oftentimes what I see as a mistake is sellers going with the person who sold them a home and then they reach out to them and they ask them, hey, can you help me with my four unit building? Naturally, they're gonna say yes, but are they the right fit? How many apartment buildings have they sold and is that really their specialty? So this question is gonna help you determine that. The next question you should be asking is, do you own any apartment buildings? I think it's critically important. If you're out there marketing yourself as an apartment broker that you own apartment buildings, you know the ins and outs of everything having to do with apartment ownership, that will play a critical role in the success of selling your building. The next question is, do you live in this area? In order to really sell a property is, you know the restaurants that are nearby, you know the rents that the one bedroom is gonna command, you know the type of tenants, you know what the amenities are that the tenant is looking for, the lifestyle that this area creates, and you would only know that when you live in that area. The next question is, how many expired listings do you have in the last 12 months? Let me explain an expired listing. Someone lists a property with a broker and that property does not sell. We know for a fact there's certain, certain people in our industry who have this large, large amount of expired listings. Why is that? Do they not know how to properly evaluate a property? If that's the case, why are they selling real estate? Are they overpricing things? Are they not marketing it properly? If you're interviewing someone and they have a large number of expired listings, that should be a red flag. The point of listing a property is to sell it. 
right? And what we see is there's, <laughs> we see it over and over again, properties that are listed, typically overpriced and the home doesn't sell or the property doesn't sell, then you, the seller, were underserved or maybe in a case misled on the pricing and then you're unhappy with the situation, you've wasted three, four months that you could have actually sold the property, but instead the property's still yours and the agent simply left a bad taste in your mouth. One of the questions that you should be asking the person you're interviewing is how well or what experience do you have with dealing with tenants? This is critically important is um, the tenant plays this really, really important role in the actual facilitation of the sale. Whether it's a four unit building, a two unit building, or even an eight unit building, we're gonna be asking that tenant permission for us to go in there five to eight times throughout the transaction. Now listen, I know that with a 24 hour notice, they have to let us in, but I've heard that oftentimes, if it's not done properly, the tenants could refuse access slowing down or essentially stopping the sale. It's important that the agent could relate to the tenants, that they know how to communicate with them, sometimes even communicate in their language and make it seem that everything's gonna be okay. Tenants in this situation are gonna be super, super fearful that they're gonna be asked to move. Oh my gosh, who's gonna be the new owner? Are they gonna raise my rent? Uh, can I trust the new owner? And so from the very beginning, it's important that the agent with the right demeanor puts them at ease so that Throughout that transaction, whether we need to take photos, inspections, walkthroughs, roof inspections, garage inspections, and final verifications, there's literally, again, five to eight times that we're gonna be asking that tenant to please let us in. So it's super important that a good agent can navigate the process with the tenants so that we could avoid any issues throughout the sale. One question you should be asking is, are you bilingual? In certain areas, uh, there's going to be a higher concentration of Spanish-speaking tenants. And in those areas, for example, Long Beach and San Pedro, critically important that you are bilingual because when we're trying to get access so that we're able to facilitate the sale, speaking Spanish, super important, definitely helps. The next question to ask is, how do you plan on marketing my property? So there are two things when selling your property that most owners want. They wanna know how quick is it gonna sell and for how much. Now, if the agent you're interviewing is simply doing the traditional marketing and they're not willing to try video and some of these other things that are known to help, they're simply not marketing your property at its full potential. The next question is, how well do they understand the financial analysis of a property? You're selling a income producing property, the person you're hiring should be really, really good at this. So when you ask them questions such as, tell me about the cap rate in this area, what you're asking them is, what's a rate of return in this area that an investor is willing to purchase this property? And see what the response is. If it's a good response and it's detailed and they know the number, great. If they don't, then we have a concern. Maybe they're not a specialist when it comes to selling uh, income producing property. I'm gonna give you a few other metrics. Gross rent multiplier, what is it? What do you suggest? Where do you think my property should be at? What's gonna be the cash on cash return for the buyer? Who is my pull of buyer? Is it an owner user? Someone who's gonna live in one of the units and rent out the rest? Is it an investor? Now, the next question I recommend you ask is, what type of listing agreement are you gonna be making me sign? There's two types of listing agreements that you would be signing when you wanna sell your building. Uh, the first one here in California, we use the California Association of Realtors listing agreement. And the second one is used by much, much larger companies, which was created in-house by their in-house attorney, which we found after reviewing it is much more favorable to the listing broker, not so much you, the owner. So when it comes to listing agreements, use the one that is nationally approved by the National Association of Realtors instead of a private listing agreement, which will not be as favorable to you. Another question to ask the person you're interviewing is outside of real estate brokerage, what other value do you bring apartment owners? And I think this is important because we want to find out, are they an average agent, meaning that they're just in this for the commission, for the transaction, and they're, once the sale closes, they're gone, or are they a true professional? These are the questions that we need to be asking because that's going to tell you, are they the right person for the job? And can they maximize the value of your property? So as an owner right now, when you're thinking about selling, there's four different types of agents that you're gonna be encountering. The first type of agent is someone who's simply not qualified, someone who sells houses. The second type of agent is someone who overprices properties and they have a history of a lot of expired listings. The third agent is what we call the discount agent. Okay, so this, this is someone who will get your attention because they're gonna offer like a 1% listing fee and that, you know, that's, that's their hook to get you their attention. But let's talk about that. So that agent 
their value proposition to you is I'm gonna charge you less. What they're essentially saying is, I don't know how to stand out or do a better job on selling your building, I'll simply just lower my fees. And let me ask you, if someone who's willing to lower their fees so quickly, consider that the first negotiation, what are they gonna do in the middle of a real negotiation when they're sitting across from someone like me? So they're trying to sell your biggest asset, but they may not be the right fit. And number four, there's a lot of people in our industry that do this as a hobby. It's not a business, it's not a profession. They just do a deal one or two every year. And certainly that person is not able to negotiate on your behalf. Again, when you're selling a building, sometimes we think there's only one negotiation and that's the purchase price. Common misconception, there's actually 30 different negotiations that go on from start to finish in a complete sales transaction. So you want someone who is negotiating on a daily basis, is familiar with this type of asset and could best guide you through these different facets of the sale. Here at our company, what we've done is we've created this community where we do everything to educate, to guide, and to be a resource to apartment owners. So we have this community where a lot of folks simply call us with property management questions, questions about the um, amnesty program that was just passed, questions about accessory dwelling units. We're here as a resource on what forms to use. We're here before the sale, during, and certainly after. And I think that that's what separates us from the rest. Here at Sage Real Estate, we are the fourplex market leader. All right, so we sell more fourplexes than anybody else. So we certainly understand that market better. We know the sellers, we know the type of buyers for it, and certainly the financing that comes in place. And because of that, we've been able to sell for 10% more and 10 times faster. So we certainly know our ratios. If you find someone that's like us, who is an expert in multifamily, who's qualified to do the work, area expert, and has earned your trust, then that's who you should go with. You've now found the right agent. You now know the right steps, the right questions to ask in finding your right agent. Because when you do, you'll have a smooth transaction, you'll sell for more, and you'll sell faster. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, make sure to comment below. If you want other similar videos, make sure to subscribe. See you next time.